Talk about uh, HTC Vive in general and how to develop HTC Vive using uh, Unity. So I think I think it's better to show a few like open source like uh, solution out there to because you got the HTC Vive right. That means that you got this two controller, which means that you need to use these two controller to actually like interact with those kind of game world, right? A cube or stuff like that. You want to pick up something, right? So. Actually, there's one solution for that already. It's called Newton VR. It's a really neat tool. So, Newton VR. So, okay. Do you know? I don't know. I don't know, let me quit that. Okay. I actually can make it lower, I actually prefer it lower. Oh, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, Okay, Okay. Can you, can you see it now? Okay, okay. Alright. Right, so this uh, Newton VR, it looks something like this. It got two modes. One is the ghost mode. You see a bit transparent, right? And after that, you can move through something. Then when you push, press the grab button, then you grab something. Right, so so I'll just do a quick demo of how it... Oh, where's my Unity? Hold on. Right, it's over here. Example. Right, uh, Roy, can you, can you test out the... Uh, don't need. It just like hang, right? I feel my, I feel like my whole world just stopped, you know. <laughs> right? If you look at the code over here, it's like oh, there, even there's a gun also, so you can. It's pretty much free, so it's actually NVR example gun and stuff like that. And then just now I show you the boxes. Is right, where is it? Uh, no, this this one is a level thing. So you got the base and the axle. Right, it's a prefab. You just need to like drag and drop and stuff like that. So as you can see, this is like a simple like what do you call that? Huh? We always like to play that game, escape room. Yeah, by by using this few element playing around, you add some texture and stuff like that. There you go, escape room. Right, this might be maybe it's a good like death jam idea. Right, <laughs> so that's about uh, NVR. I mean. Of course, to set up you a bit a bit different than you normally set up a Steam VR game, but basically it's this one and VR camera. You drag it over here. The controller got different kind of controller settings. Then after that, you can use this to actually like. Uh, then this will be like physically can interact with all those kind of virtual objects. So that's that's about like NVR. 
I mean, this is a quick introduction, so you guys know what it is and then how you're going to use this. All these details, of course, you guys need to explore yourself. <laughs> but or you can ask me because I use it for a few items. Right. So then I would like to talk about Focus Point VR. This this is a very interesting open source. Uh, so so uh, to access to Steam uh, the Newton VR, right? You can go to the GitHub. So over here, if you just you just Google search Newton VR, uh, and then after that, then you go to their GitHub and then download and stuff like that. Right, and then another one, another very interesting project is called uh, Focus Point VR, I think. Focal Point VR. Focal Point VR. Right, so. There you go, this one. So it's about interactivity framework. So what it focuses is uh, to, to, if, to, to, to let you control the world around you. So you can scale object and stuff like that. You can move object around using this thing. So, so what's the difference between this thing and the, uh, the, the Newton VR? It, it can do something like this. Right. So you want to do like uh, object manipulation using your two controller, you can do something. You use, use this system. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Let's do a quick demo over here. So, as it focal point we are, ah, there you go. Alright. I like this demo because this is, uh, so basically, this is moving this whole, uh, this whole scene around. So, let me play this thing. Roy, can you, Roy, first one? Oh, yeah. Just, hold on, run again. You know how to control this, right, Roy? Uh, you use uh, like you use the pointer. Oh, what happened? You look at the you need to look at the base. Okay, uh, so point point at the floor, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, like this. Yes. Yeah, you can zoom out. <laughs> right, there you go. Right, zoom out higher lah. Are you afraid of height? <laughs> uh, look look at the ground and then zoom all the way up. <laughs> zoom zoom zoom. <laughs> There you go, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So so imagine that like you put a CT view over here, then you then you got a like a map zooming ish thing already, right? <laughs> and then you can do the smart nation or whatever, like CT view, you know. Maybe the marina bay is over there. <laughs> Right. Okay, so I'll show you how, how this thing works. So, uh, I mean, of course, the code itself is crazy, la, but the, the, the author actually uh, like, uh, packaged it really nicely. So if you look at this ground, right, it's basically this focal point VR manipulation handle. Do you see this thing? Right. You just need to attach this thing, and then after that, then the, the controller need to... Uh, you need to... You, I, why, I don't know why he named this thing, like, drag me into camera, but it's, it's an instruction. <laughs> Right, you need to drag inside the camera rig. Then after that, then you, uh, this is because this is a prefab. You just need to drag it in, and then this tool is uh, stuff added already. Then after that, then you can use this uh, focal point system to control this particular thing, which is this one. For this case, it's a ground. Right, you just need to add this focal point VR manipulation handler, and that's all. Of course, you look at the code; it's crazy, uh, because you need to like, handle all this kind of like the, the metrics between the controller to do some crazy stuff with it to, to make it to the scale, transform, and the rotation. Right. But the idea is to get you ready for the Dev Jam. So we've got all these kind of free tools for us to play around with to create something real fast. Right. Okay, so then I'll jump to... I won't jump, uh, I'll just show you a, a video so that you've got a good idea of uh, what can be done. Right, so this is called Read Motion. So it's another open source tools. So the idea is actually, do you see? Do, do you see that uh, he put another controller in front of his pants? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that? Uh, that so then when he move around, then the the then the the, the player in the con uh, I mean the world move also. Right. This is a very neat tool. I mean, for, for most of the people that I test with, they don't have motion sickness with this. So this, instead of like teleporting, right, they use something like this to actually move around. And then he can shoot around somehow. So 
I mean, he already created a pretty nice like unity scene, but maybe it's a good idea to like you know make it like sci-fi-ish or whatever. So one one like you like moving around and then shoot people. Maybe you can even do a multiplayer one. I mean, uh, it's up to you guys though. <laughs> yeah, it's open source, so just search for red motion and stuff like that. Then you can uh, pretty much pull it from GitHub. If you don't know how to pull from GitHub, just ask around. Yeah. Right. So and then another thing I want to show is. The uh, there's a new tool that just came out from some guy. It's called where is it now? Uh? Hold on, uh. give me some time. Right, I I think I didn't install it, but it's over here. It's called Steam VR. Util. Steam, Steam VR Unity you toolkit. Right. So this is a really nice tool also. So, so if you want to be a little bit old school, instead of putting your controller inside the pants, you decided to do teleportation, you can use something like this. Right. So he, he already do the bezier, bezier curve laser pointer for us already. So so you can uh, use this one. So I, I, I remember it's basically a prefab, and then you just need to like uh, attach it to your left controller or right controller, and then you do the trigger thing, then it should be done already. So what's Bezier Curve uh, to get there? So this is how it looks like. Right, do you see this? So, so I mean, the normal one is like, you know, you are pointing at a certain area, right? Then you've got a laser pointer straight over to the place that you want to teleport to. So this one instead is a little bit like curved so that you can actually reach to a place that is higher than you that you cannot see. So you can like do something like this and you, you see it teleport over there, right? So this is another way that you can use to actually like, if you want to do teleportation, instead of using that grid motion, which is like more towards like FPS, this one is more towards like strategy and stuff like that, maybe. Right. So, all right. Right. So, all right. So. It, so if you want to get started with the Steam VR project, right? So you actually go just go to the Unity uh, asset store and then download the Steam VR plugin, right? Then after that, then you uh, drag the prefab, the Steam VR prefab, which is over here, Steam VR prefab. So drag this thing, camera rig over here, right? Over here. Then after that, then. Uh, I mean, if you want to do something with the controller itself, if you want to do something like totally different than like the things that I show you just now, that like all this kind of framework, like interact with physics, object, teleportation, and stuff like that, you want to like uh, listen to the trigger event or the grab button. So, so the HTC Vive got a, a few uh, like button and stuff like that. One is the grip button where you grip it. Another one is the trigger. Another one is the track pad. So if you want to go down the like deep level and then to listen to all this kind of thing and do some action, right? So what you need to do is uh, you you go to this, after you drag this camera read controller over here already, right? So you see this controller left, right? So you add in this Steam VR track controller over here. So do you see this like trigger press, Steam press, menu press thing over here, right? So this is a Boolean, right? So which means that every time you click this thing already, then the, this Boolean will be like set. So you can listen to this. Right, so and then with this, then you can do all this kind of action. You can program all the things that you need to, by inside the update of whatever. Right, so I think that's pretty much for me. Right, any question? Yes. And, um, the data for the controllers, the stream of the data, is it like the position and the timing? Or 
So, so there's different kind of data, right? So you are talking about the position of the the the, the, the controller itself, is it? So because when I click, okay, let let me play this thing, right? When I play this thing, right? So hey, hold on. So when I play this thing, right? So do you see? Uh, uh, Roy, can you on the controller? Yeah, both of them. All right. Can you move the thing around? All right. Okay. Do you see this? The the position actually changes. So the controller, you can use even to know the position of controller. You can do something. You just get the transform position. Dot X Y Z or whatever. So that, that's the uh, that's the controller. And then another thing is, uh, the, can you do the trigger press? Right, you see this boolean has been pressed already. So this is how you get the, the, the boolean of the stuff. So you every update you listen to it. Or there's another thing is if you look at the code over here, uh, where is it? Trap control no. Okay, this. Hold on yeah. So and then another thing is uh, they got the track the track pad X Y Z also because they got the track pad, yeah. so you can get it also in, inside. I think it's a private, it's not public, but you can access it using that one. So yes, yeah. So so the, 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 then you got the position already and all this kind of thing is all over here that you can just update, listen to. And then another way to 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 get it is actually uh, using because uh, you see this steam. VR track controller that I added just now, right? So you just get component, then after that you get this controller already, right? So this uh, trigger click is actually a click event handler. It's a it's a delegate, right? So that's why you see me at plus equal this thing. So it's like multicast it. So so it's like every time the trick is uh, trigger is click, then it will trigger this do click event, right? So this is how you listen to this event right so there's other stuff so if you look at the controller itself then uh, uh bro, can you press a caps lock yeah thank you right if you look at the controller there's other stuff over here you see on trigger on pet touch so pet is that pet touch when the pet is touched then it will give you the xyz uh, xy of the pet so and then there's a few interesting things also. So there's a if you look at the Steam uh, util and stuff like that, you can actually fire out a keyboard, a Steam VR keyboard, right? Th then you can do the typing, right? So but I think you can use the touchpad also, but I haven't tested. It. Normally I just like clicking it. So basically you can like type stuff and then things will happen, right? So did I miss anything? Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any more question? So I, I see all these interesting, um, like just open source projects. But what does a bare bones, uh, like Steam, like Valve provided uh, API look like? This one? This one? Uh, sorry, the, the the track controller thing. Sorry, hold on. Uh. Can you do the trigger press? Yeah, this this particular thing that just now you saw it when he pressed the trigger, then the boolean been set. This is the bare bone. Okay. Right. And then all these other open source ones, they don't necessarily build upon that. They have their yes. own organization. Yes. Okay. But uh, I'm not too, I haven't tested whether both, all of them work well together. Okay. Right. I think uh, that because, because this, okay, okay, let's talk about this Steam VR track controller. So by default, in the prefab, it's not been set over that one. So it's somewhere hidden in the extra folder down there there's something called steam vr track controller that nobody knows about it but i saw it then i decided to try to like tinker with it actually i changed some of the code so uh, you see i comment out the start right because the start uh, so so why i comment it out and then why i use something called set device index the the reason is because this set device index will be called every time there's a new con because just now i asked roy to on it right so it's like when they on it already, then it will assign the device index. So, so but, but the but the in original code doesn't have something like this. It assigns when it's 
stuck, we screw things up, right? I don't know what they do, but that's why I think they hide it somewhere. <laughs> but it's just an easy fix. Uh. I don't know why they don't do this. But anyway, I posted it out in my, in my medium, so you guys can use that code. Yeah. Any more questions? So, that uh, little black window there with the icons, when you was turning on the controller, you can see the control icon light up. So is that the, this one is it? It's part of the driver. Like this one is it? Yes. Right. Yeah. This is Steam VR. So uh, I mean, you you possibly you, you don't need to install this. Also can, but it's easier. The thing is because it will keep the Steam VR running. So every time you click the play button in your Unity, you don't need to wait for like few few seconds. Right. Yeah. So you just keep on running behind so that every time you press it, then boom. That's why just now I just click that button and then straight away Roy can test it out like real fast. So that is more like a small monitor and also yeah. it helps you keep the connection. Yes, the background task. Uh, if you didn't have this on, you can still Yeah, you can still run it. And also yeah. run a viral application. Yes, yes. Uh, so one good example is uh, the Chromium, a uh, special type of Chromium, Web VR Chromium. Right, can can actually you can actually read the controller and the head mounted display already. So that one doesn't if you don't run this thing VR you can, you can still run it. Right, any more question? Which version of Unity are you using? Uh five. Uh as in which uh what is this? Five point two or five point three? I think it's five point one something. I haven't upgraded yet because I, I'm going to wait for this this presentation finished then I'll upgrade. <laughs> uh, or this uh, that gem finished then I'll upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then I can't wait for the. You need to test HTC Vive with the uh, Unreal Man, huh? The the using the HTC to 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 become the editor of Unreal. Okay, download that huh? <laughs> on the test. <laughs> All right, any more question? Uh, where's Khalil? Uh? I won't come. Uh? Okay, we've got one more speaker, but I think it's late. But in the meantime, so uh, do you guys got any? Uh, so the the next thing in our agenda is like, uh, anyone got any ideas that you want to like pre present?